have this spreadsheet with information about course numbers and the class level of those courses. And if I want to answer a question like how many courses are grad versus undergrad, I have a couple options. First, I could sort this sheet by this column so it's all grouped together so that I can find out how many there are, count them up, and do what I need to do with that. I could even do something like this where I type out those responses so when I select this I can see in the bottom right there's five graduate and then undergraduate there are three. This is great and all but what happens if I add an option under here? My numbers don't change. I have to go in and modify them or if one of these changes it's all manual. Pivot tables can do this so much better. So below here, I have a pivot table I created that automatically counts these up. And as I change the data, you can watch this undergraduate number change because it's all connected to the main data. So the pivot table automatically updates as things change. Let's take a look at how I created this pivot table. So the first step in creating a pivot table is selecting your data. So I'm going to select column A. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to click on the last column I want to select which is B and those are selected. So next is to insert a pivot table. So from the insert menu choose pivot table. Here you want to choose where to put this in a new sheet or in an existing sheet. I'm going to use the new sheet option for now and it creates a new tab on the bottom, pivot table and a number. So here are my pivot table tools. So what I need to think of first is what is the row I want to add. So in other words, what are those things I want to either count or sum on? What values? And for this it's the class level. So for rows, next to that I'm going to click on add and I'm going to choose class level. And then if you watch the pivot table in the main screen there, it will automatically add every single unique value in the class level column. And here it's showing me that grad and graduate separately, so I probably don't want them separate, so I'll go back and fix my data in a minute. So the second thing you want to do when you create a pivot table is add some kind of value. So in this case, what do I want to either sum up or get an average of or count? In this case, I'm talking about words, the words graduate versus undergraduate, so my only option really is count. So I'm going to take that course level and I could click on I could click on add here again next to values or I can grab it from this options list on the right and drag it and drop it under values and my numbers are there. So let's go ahead and fix this inconsistency where I have grad used instead of graduate. I'm going to click on the tab where my data was. I'm going to find the value that says grad and I'll copy one of the correct values out and I'll paste it in on top of that. So now when I go back to my pivot table I will see those are updated now. So this is a great way to check your data, make a pivot table, see if you see what you expect. So one of the things this is great for is making charts. So if I want to make a chart of this data, in this case I could do it from the main data, but it's super easy to do it with a pivot table. So to do that, I'm going to select all the chart except for the grand total. I don't want the grand total. And to hide that total, I could actually uncheck it by saying show totals, no. And then I can check my whole table. And now I'll go to insert and I will choose chart. And because of this data structure, it automatically gave me a par chart, which is what I wanted with those labels there. Let's go into a little bigger data set. And as you can imagine, if you have only 10 rows, doing this stuff manually isn't too horrible. But when you have more data, especially when the data set is changing, pivot tables are so much easier than the other ways to answer these questions. So in this data set, let's try to answer some more of these questions. We have a question here, which has more classes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Thursday? So for this pivot table, we are looking at the day column. So I'm going to again select my data, selecting the last column I want, hold down shift on my computer, click on the first column I want, then insert menu and select pivot table. And for this one, I'm going to actually put the pivot table right in this sheet, so I'll choose existing sheet. And then to select where I want to put it, I'm going to click on this select data range. It's like a window pane icon. And when I click on that, it allows me to click somewhere on the sheet to select a cell. I'm going to put this in H1. I'll click OK to confirm that location and then create to create that table. Scroll over a bit here to see where I'm working. 
So for this one again, we said we want to know which day has more classes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday. So for this one, I need to add the day to the rows column. So under rows, I'll click on add, I'll choose day. And just like we did before, for values, I'm going to also add day so that it counts up those values. So in this situation, I wanted to know which one has most. So it makes sense to order my chart by descending count. So to do that, I'm going to go up here to the rows section. And in the day card, for order, I'm going to select descending. And right now, it's ordering by descending the day. But I don't want it being alphabetical day. I want to be sorted by the count of the day. And so when I do that, I get a nice chart with most common days at the top down to the least common. And now if you're wondering why we have a zero here, it's because when I select the data, I selected the entire column and there are a bunch of empty rows at the bottom. So if I wanted to clean up my data and make that blank go away, I could do that through filters. So on the bottom right for filters, I'm gonna click add and I wanna make sure that there's a value in course number. So I'll select course number and then in this course number status drop down, I'll select that and I'm going to unselect blanks. And then it's going to only show values where there is something in the course number. Let's take a look at one of the more tricky questions here. Which start time on Tuesday, Thursday is the most common? So we have our Tuesday, Thursday added in here, but how do I get start times in this also? So there's a couple different ways. One of the ways I can do that is by adding start times to the rows. I can have more than one value in rows actually. So let's try that first. So I'm gonna go to rows, I'm gonna click on add, I'm going to choose start time. And once I added that, you can see it nicely lays out all of these different start times grouped by the day. And just as a note, you can drag these little cards around to change the order depending on which way you want to see your data. In this case, it makes more sense to have day at the top so that all of my Tuesday, Thursdays are grouped together. And then if I want to find out which start time has the most, I want to reorder my day column. So I want to order it descending, but I want to order it by count of day. And my start time, I also want to order by descending and count of day. And so now I can see my most common start time on Tuesday, Thursday is 11 a.m. So the other way that I can add in my start time and my day to a pivot table is by using columns. So right now I have day and start time both in the rows field, but I can actually take day and I can drag it down under columns. And then what it does, let me move my little questions out of the way. Then what it does is it adds the day of the week across the top and the start times on the left. So here I have these two different areas where it has values and if I want to know which is the most common start time on Tuesday, Thursday, I would want to order these by the count in the day time, but I want to do it by Tuesday, Thursday. So I have that biggest one at the top of Tuesday, Thursday. And once I do that, the biggest number four is right there. So I can know that 11 a.m. is the most common start time. We talked a little bit about making a pie chart. Let's tackle this one. How do we make a bar chart that shows the total class duration by room? I want to know how many hours that these rooms are being used. So what I'm going to do is use this same chart I used here. I'm going to clear out the information I had before. I'll keep the filter because I still just want values where there is a course number. And this one, I want to start with the room. I want to know which rooms everything is in. So for rows, I'm going to go to add and I'm going to choose room number and it's going to show all the different room numbers here as an option. And for values, I want to know that duration. So I'll choose values and I'll select duration. So when I go to this duration field, you'll notice that it's changing the different ways to aggregate or summarize this data. Instead of using a count here, it automatically selected sum, which is what I want. I want the total time that a room is used. Now I can make a bar chart from this. I'm gonna uncheck the grand total. I don't need to see that. I will select my data, my pivot table, go to insert, chart, and I can see this created a pie chart. So over on the chart editor that appears in the right, instead of a pie chart, let's switch it to a bar chart. And now we have our bar chart. So one of the things that 
looks kind of messy here is that in organization. It's organized by room number instead of by duration from biggest to smallest, for example. So although I could have created this chart from my main data set, reordering the data in the chart is a little trickier and it really works best when you have a pivot table. That's because if I close out my chart editor here and I'm back in my pivot table editor, and if I ever lose those tools on the right hand side, I can click on the pivot table, find the little pencil, click edit, and then open them up again. So if I want my chart to reorder, I have to reorder my data. So right now it's ordered ascending by room number, but if I rather order it ascending by sum of the duration, when I do that to my pivot table, my chart also gets reordered. So the room with the most hours is the farthest to the right, and they all organize from there. These tools are super powerful. Definitely get to know pivot tables.